Hello, everybody. My name is Chris Thorpe. I'm going to talk today about mapping from file. So this will include M365 groups, chats, teams, and everything to do with how to map within on-demand migration. We can see in my screen here, I've got a, a migration that's in progress. And the first thing we'll talk about is how to map accounts. So if I open my accounts group, you can see in here, we have a different windows. And for on-demand migration, all of the user mappings, all of the permission settings, and all of those user-based metadata is all formed from this account and user data window. So even if you're not migrating the accounts, if you're using something else or you've already got your accounts in both the source and the target, you still need to create a match inside of the account window to make sure that everything else that we do has the correct mapping. For example, if we're migrating a mailbox, we need to make sure that the user is mapped from the source to the target, even if we're not migrating any Azure AD attributes for that account. So that is the key part to understand with all of this is whichever section you're using within on-demand migration, you need to make sure that you match the accounts first before you perform any migration. You can see here, I've got some accounts that have already been mapped and migrated. I have the option to run a discovery where I get all of the accounts that are located in the source, and I can then manually go through and pick them up, or I can choose to match based on different usernames, different principles. If you are using the same identifier, so in here, Adele V in my source matches to Adele V in the target, then the system will automatically map all of those users for you. If you are doing something slightly different, then you'll need to use the map from file option. And you can see here, we have the map from file. Inside of our uh, environment and inside of our manuals, we have the option in here to say how we map everything. We have in our account migration, we can talk about how we map the account, how we match them, and how we use a manual process for doing this migration. So if you do need to do, go into any more detail, go into our support pages, look at the on-demand migration admin guide, and that will provide a lot more detail around what you need to do. Before I do this link, I will show you an example of the document that I have here. You can see here, I've got my identifier, and I'm using the user principal name, so the UPN in the source and the target. And I, in this situation, I'm actually doing something a little bit unusual. I've got three accounts in my source, and I'm mapping them all to the same user in the target. So you can see that I've got Patty F being matched to Irving S, Pradeep also being mapped, and Irving S, which is his basic account, is being mapped across to the same one. What I'm trying to do here is to show if we've had a merger and if different people have different accounts, we can merge a number of different individual accounts into the same user in the target. So it's kind of like a many to one relationship. If I go through this process, I can just browse for that file. And there's my two becomes one. I can open that. I'll just say next, go through, and I finish it. And that will go through and it will create that map for me. And I will then be able to see as I scroll through, this is something that I've already done. So if I have a look for Patty further down, there's Patty. You can see there that we have that user mapping set at both the, uh, the source UPN and the target UPN. So now anytime I come across that user in any of my additional migrations, that account will be mapped from Patty F to Irving S. And so that is how we would do that migration from an account perspective. Now, if we have a look at a slightly different migration, so if we look at a Teams migration, the principle of the mapping is exactly the same. However, there are some more steps that we have to take because the, the Teams migration is always a, a three-step process. So we do our discovery, we do our provisioning, and then we do our migration of content. We have our Teams migration here. So if we go into our Teams section, again, we have the two options. So if I highlight a couple of teams in here, 
I can choose to export those teams. And I can then open this file and it will present to me the Excel with all of the details of those two locations. Select these and I just expand them so that we can see what we have here. This literally just produces a list of the team name, the workflow, how many channels, how much content is in there, when it was created, what I'm going to call the team in my target and the source mail nickname. Now, if I want to rename these teams, then I can basically chop this CSV around and I can just keep the target team name and the source mail nickname. And again, this is important to realize is that we should never change the source mail nickname because that is what everything is built on from a team's perspective. When we perform that migration, we can change the team name but we can't change the source mail nickname because that's our linking point from the source tenant into the target tenant. With the magic of television, here's one that I heard earlier. And again, you can see in here, my target team name is the column name that I'm using. And the source mail nickname is, again, from taken from that export. I'm just gonna do something very simple here. I'm just going to call it Adele VT rename. And that is my original nickname. And similarly for the location one. Again, I shall map from my file. I shall browse for this. And I know I call this team map CSV. You can see there. So I can open that and go through. And I'm now going to map those teams. And I'm going to go through and uh, run that task. If at any point you are looking for the process of the team and the process that you're running, you can go into the task window and the latest task will be there. They'll show the current state and they will allow us to run. Once that completes, I could then go through and I can provision and I can map my team. And because I've got the accounts in all of these teams mapped and I'm going through you know, to make sure all of these details are right, you can see that my team nickname hasn't changed yet. But once that migration, ah, there we go. It's go there. So if I now chose this account, I can now provision that team and it will provision it with my new name. During the provisioning, I can go through, I can choose where to locate it and basically I can provision that and it will go through and it will create that new team and I can then migrate the content from there. That will basically cover off the, the mapping from file principles that we do. When we provision that team in the target, that will transfer all of the owners. It will transfer the members of that team and it will create all of the different channels. It will create the public channels. It will create the private channels and it will allow us to have everything set as part of that migration.